about something? Yeah? What about? Mrs. Wire, I'm sorry to say that I just don't consider these cockroaches to be the most desirable kind of roommates. Do you? Cockroaches, huh? Yes, precisely. Now, I have had very little experience with cockroaches in my life, but the few that I've seen before have been the pedestrian kind, the kind that walk. These, Mrs. Wire, appear to be flying cockroaches. I was shocked. In fact, I was literally stunned when one of them took off the floor and started to whiz through the air, around and around in a circle, just missing my face by barely a couple of inches. Mrs. Why? I sat down on the edge of this bed and wept. I was just so shocked and disgusted. Imagine flying cockroaches Something I never dreamt to be in existence, whizzing around and around and around in front of my face. Why, Mrs. Why, I want Why you to know. cockroaches are nothing to be surprised at. They have them all over. Even uptown they have them. But that ain't that what I That may be to... true, Mrs. Why, but I may as well tell you. I have a horror of roaches. Even the plain old-fashioned pedestrian kind. And as for this type that flies, I'm going to stay on here. These flying cockroaches have got to be gotten rid of and gotten rid of at once. Now, how am I going to stop them flying cockroaches from coming in through the windows? But that, however, is not how, what I... Mrs. Why, but there certainly must be a method. All I know is they must be gotten rid of before I will sleep here one more night. Mrs. Why, why, if I woke up in the night and found one on my bed, I'd have a convulsion. I swear to goodness, I'd simply die of convulsion. If you'll excuse me for saying so, Mrs. Hardshell Moore, you're much more likely to die from over drinking than cockroach convulsions. What's this here? Lox for lotion. Well, I use it to take your polish off my nails. Very fastidious, yes. What do you mean? There ain't an old house in the corner that don't have roaches. But not in such enormous quantities, do they? I tell you, this place is actually crawling. It ain't as bad as all that. And by the way, you ain't yet paid me the rest of this week's rent. I don't want to get you off the subject of roaches. But nevertheless, I want to collect that money. I'll pay you the rest of the rent as soon as you've exterminated the roaches. You'll have to pay me the rest of the rent right away or get out. I intend to get out unless these roaches get out. Then get out then and quit just talking about it. But you must be out of your mind. I can't get out right now. Then what do you mean about the roaches? I meant what I said about roaches. They are not, in my opinion, the most desirable kind of roommates. Okay, don't room with them. Pack your stuff and move where they don't have roaches. You mean you insist upon having the roaches? No. I mean, I insist upon having the rent you owe me. Right at the moment, that is out of the question. Out of the question, is it? Yes, and I'll tell you why. The quarterly payments I received from the man who's taking care of the rubber plantation have not been forwarded yet. I've been expecting them to come in for several weeks now, but in the letter I received this morning, it appears there has been some little misunderstanding about last year's tax. Oh, now stop that! I've heard enough of that goddamn rubber plantation. The Brazilian rubber plantation. You think I've been in this business 17 years and learned nothing about your kind of women? What is the implication in that remark? I suppose the men that you have in here nice come in to discuss the Brazilian rubber plantation. You must be crazy to say such a thing as that. I hear what I hear, and I know what's going on. I know you spy. I know you listen to dogs. I never spy, and I never listen to dogs. The first thing a landlady in the French Quarter learns is not to see and not to hear, but only to collect your money. As long as that comes in, okay, I'm blind, I'm deaf, I'm dumb. But as soon as it stops, I recover my hearing and also my sight and also the use of my senses. 
If necessary, I go to the phone to call up the chief of police who happens to be an in-law of my sister's. I heard last night that argument over money. What argument? What money? He shouted so loud I had to shut the front windows to stop the noise from carrying out on the streets. I heard no mention of any Brazilian plantation, but plenty of other things were plainly referred to in that little midnight conversation you had. Locks were lotion! Take the polish off nails! Am I in my infancy? Am I? That's on a par with the one that's plantation! Oh, it's you. Stop persecuting this woman! Second, Mr. Shakespeare enters the scene. I heard your demon howling in my sleep. Sleep? <laughs> Think what you mean is your drunken stupor. I rest because of my illness. Have I no right illness. to- Illness. Alcoholic. Don't try, don't try to pull the wool over my eyes. I'm glad you come in now. I repeat for your benefit what I just said to this woman. I'm done with deadbeats. Now is that plain to you? Completely fed up with all you corner rats, half-breeds, drunkards, degenerates who try to get by on promises, lies, delusions. Please, please, please stop shrinking. It's not necessary. You, with your Brazilian rubber plantation. That coat of arms on the wall you've got from the junk shop. The woman that sold it told me. One of the Habsburgs. A tired old lady. The lady of Luxburg. <laughs> There's your tongue. Stop badgering this unfortunate little woman! Is there no mercy in the world anymore? What has become of compassion and understanding? Where have they all gone to? Where's God? Where's Christ? What if there is no Brazilian rubber plantation? I tell you, there is. There is! What if there is no rubber king in her life? There ought to be rubber kings in her life. Is she to be blamed because it is necessary for her to compensate for the cruel deficiencies of reality by the exercise of a little, how shall I say, God-given imagination? No, 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 it isn't imagination. I'll ask you to please stop spitting me in the face those half-long speeches. You with your 780-page masterpiece. Right on the par with the lady of Locke's Pelotion, as far as the use of imagination is concerned. Oh, well, now, what if I am? Suppose there is no 780 page masterpiece in existence. Suppose there is in existence no masterpiece whatsoever. What of that, Mrs. Why? But only a few, a very few vain scribblings in my old trunk bottom. Suppose I wanted to be a great artist but lacked the force and the power. And supposing my books fell short of the final chapter, even my verses languished uncompleted. Suppose the curtains of my exalted fancy rose on magnificent drams, but the house lights darkened before the curtain fell. Suppose that all these unfortunate things are true, and suppose that I, stumbling from bar to bar, from drink to drink, till at last I sprawl on the lice-infected mattress of this brothel, Suppose that I, to make this nightmare bearable for as long as I must continue to be the helpless protagonist of it. Suppose I ornament, illuminate, glorify it with dreams and fictions and fancies such as a 780 page masterpiece, impending Broadway productions, marvelous volumes of verse in the hands of publishers only waiting for final signature for them to release them. Suppose I live in this world of pitiful fiction. What satisfaction can it give you, good woman, to tear it to pieces, to crush it and call it a lie? I tell you this. Now listen! There are no lies, but the lies that are stuffed in the 
the mouth by the cold, knuckled hand of need, the cold iron fist of necessity, Mrs. Y. So I am a liar. Yes! But your world is built on a lie. Your world is a hideous fabrication of lies, lies, lies! Now I'm tired, and I've said my say, and I have no money to give you. So get out and leave this woman in peace. Leave her alone. Go on, get out, get away! say it was possible to distinguish the white chalk cliffs of Dover across the channel? Yes. In very clear weather, it was. Thank you, Mr. Chekhov. Anton Pavlovich Chekhov. Thank you. Mr. Chekhov. Mama, won't you like me? Would that really like me? To go through it? 